here we are at the High Tech Housing Factory in Bristol, Indiana, and it's a modular builder, and they specialize, they've been doing some passive house compliant uh, modular building for us, and we want to show you uh, how we get our thick walls. If you look here in the window frame, you can see this wall is about 14 inches thick. It's got an interior wall, a 2x4, an exterior wall, a 2x4, and then it's got cellulose between those two walls. And the way we do this is that we put in this fabric. Uh, it has many names. One brand is Insulweb. We staple that on the studs here, and then we blow the cellulose in. And if you could come in for a little bit, we'll show you how we staple the, the, the fabric on. You see, we, we like to staple along the edges of the studs here, as close to the corner as possible, so that the fabric, um, so we don't get any cellulose between the fabric and the studs. So here we are in one of these spaces. Now, uh, this is dense pack cellulose, which typically needs to be between three and a half to four pounds per cubic foot. And um, uh, I'll show you here what we have found subjectively to indicate that the density is correct. Um, this has to be packed like a very, very firm mattress. It has to be consistent from top, from bottom to top. And uh, there are different techniques for doing this. The technique that's being used here is they make a little tear every couple feet. They insert a hose and they fill it with cellulose. And then uh, often what they have to do is insert the hose again without blowing cellulose, just air to the bottom. And then they turn the cellulose on again and it fills a second time. And that will get close to the correct density. Here that technique has not really been perfected. And what's happening is that they're filling it with cellulose and then they're putting more and more in and they're reaching in there and packing it with their hand. And that way we get a density which um, we feel will not settle over time. One aspect of, these thick, of this thick wall construction is that at all the window openings we have to uh, put some kind of a board here so that the cellulose doesn't spill out into the opening. And here this has been done with, with Luon. Uh, in the past we've also done it with OSB. Now, there's an issue that comes up when we fill these walls up to this density. They start to bulge a little bit. I'm going to show you this bulge. You might be able to see it with this board. Um, if you come in close, you can see how the board, it's touching the board here, but on the sides, it goes down again. And um, what we found is often, in order to get it tight enough, you might actually have a half inch bulge outside the stud. And this could be problematic when you're putting OSB on the wall. And so a technique that's been developed um, is that you use a roller like this. You can buy these for $20 at Lowe's. They're made by Cobalt and other manufacturers. They're usually used for laminating uh, countertops. But in this case, who would think that this would do anything? Because this is quite firm. But if you take this roller and you roll it like this, uh, presto, it's flat. So this Watch. roller is a magic tool take the board. to get, um, the I'm going to show you how flat it is. Um, Anyway, the, the bulge is gone now. And so uh, this is a way to get the required density. And then um, at this point, you just roll it for just a few times, and that will flatten it. And so there won't be a problem. If you had too much of a bulge here, when you put your sheathing on the outside, it could actually push the sheathing out. Um, so oh, well. you want that density to be from the very bottom to the very top. And there are a few areas that you have to watch out for. One of those areas is um, at the window sills, what will often happen is the cellulose will get packed up to here. But then uh, if you reach inside in the window sill and reach your hand under, you'll see that this area is actually kind of loose. And so the, another area that's similar is the top plate, which is double plate. There you have to be very careful because Often, the cellulose will go up to the plates pretty densely, but then between the plates, it won't be filled densely. And often, underneath this outside plate, which is kind of hard to reach, if you reach under, you'll see that it's still loose in there. So those are some areas that you don't want to be loose, because if that's loose and it settles a little bit, 
then you've got a direct path for heat to be lost and also that can develop into condensation problems where the humidity in, in a building inside in winter will start to migrate outside. Normally it would get absorbed by the cellulose and diffused, but if there was a clear path to the outside, that humidity would just condense on the sheathing and could cause uh, moisture and mold problems in the future. So this density from top to bottom is very important. Here's a picture that shows how the cellulose can settle if it hasn't been packed densely and consistently from the bottom of the wall to the top of the wall. We found that the cavity created by the cellulose settling had moisture in it as well as the sheathing that was next to that cavity. The moisture had migrated from inside the building during the winter and instead of being absorbed by the cellulose it had condensed on the cold surface of the sheathing. Condensed moisture like this on OSB is an ideal condition for mold to grow. So this is why we feel that it is extremely important for the cellulose to be packed densely and consistently from the bottom of the wall to the top. The vibration of these boxes traveling down the road for 500 miles will have a tendency to make any loose cellulose settle. We've only found settling like this in a small percentage of the openings we've made in the wall, so we know that the settling can be avoided if we're very conscientious about packing the cellulose carefully. Okay, here we have a wall before it's filled, and uh, notice how the uh, fabric is stapled on very nicely to the corners of the studs, so there's no way that uh, cellulose could get between the fabric and the stud here. Now, if we look at this uh, window opening, you can see that there's these studs at the bottom of the window, at the windowsill, and uh, a problem that I was just mentioning was that often the cellulose will come up to the top and it won't be packed very well under the stud. And it also won't be packed so well between the studs. So this is an area that you'll have to inspect uh, while the job is going on. And you actually need to reach in and put your fingers in there and reach all the way in and make sure that it's dense all the way in at all the window openings and at all the top plates. Okay, um, here's an example of a, a window opening that's been filled very nicely. And you can see actually that it hasn't gone to the top of the studs yet. This part can still be filled. What we sometimes do actually is we'll use some rolled up fiberglass insulation for this last inch and a half, although it can be done with cellulose. But what I wanted to show you specifically here is that they've really packed this tight. I can't even get my fingers in there underneath the plate. It's been done so well. that This is an excellent job. And it, you really have to stay on the people who are doing this job um, and inspect it frequently because it's it's easy to neglect this kind of thing. It's kind of a boring job, and um, but here I can't even get my finger underneath there, that even if I try as hard as I can. So this is an excellent job, and this is what you want to strive for at the windowsill so that there's no uh, layer of air between the cellulose and the sill at the top of the wall there below the windowsill. Okay, uh, one last thing to point out here is that as the walls are are filled, then the ceiling structure for the whole box gets lowered into place. And this is an example of a ceiling structure that's coming down. And um, often it could happen that the wall hasn't been filled all the way to the top. Now the best procedure is to fill it all the way to the top before you put the roof down. Because after, once the roof is down, it's very hard to check this upper area. Um, and so I recommend that you, before the roof gets put down, you go around and check underneath the top plates and make sure it's all very firm and then between the top plates all the way up to the top. Pull point it out in a close. This is the area where you want to be able to reach in there and um, make sure that it's nice and dense all the way up to the top. Like Here it hasn't even been filled. If you don't do it in time, then you're going to have to come back here and the installer is going to have to cut a hole here and fill it here and it'll be very hard to verify that it's gone all the way to the top. So try to 
check and make sure the cellulose is totally compacted before you put the roof on as much as possible. The thing that we'd like to point out is um, if you are inspecting the wall and you find some soft spots, a very easy way to record those is you get some red tape. Each plant may have a different color tape or different procedure. But what you do when you find something, you put a piece of red tape on it, and then uh, that way the installer who's working on it knows where he's got to focus. And uh, it's usually obvious once he can see it that he needs to work on that particular area. And you can see the, all these slits that we've made here, eventually they'll get covered with a little bit of, of tape. Um, we don't recommend having a lot of tape because this will serve as a vapor barrier of sorts, but a little bit of tape just to keep it together until the sheathing goes on. So for example, if I found a soft spot like here, I would put this tape on like this, and then uh, the fellow who's doing the work will see this tape and know to focus on that particular area. It's a way to record places that need a little bit more attention.